I mean, quails, quails are delicious. And I haven't met anyone who does not like to eat quails. However, quails are not that popular for one obvious reasons, because people think that quails have a lot of bones. Quails literally have the same anatomy than uh, chicken, a uh, turkey, a goose, a uh, partridge, a pheasant, a pigeon, a guinea fowl, and a duck. But there's still a lot of cooks and chefs who quail at the task of deboning a quail. Quail are small, so they are fiddly to debone, and you need quite a few to make up a decent meal. So it's a lot of deboning, and in this video, I will show you how to debone and prepare quails for cooking in five different ways, and I will also show you how to cook them as well. Okay? So after this video, you should check out the recipes in the link below so that you become a quality cook when it comes to quails. And off we go. The first version, the quail frog, I mean, it's a forgotten way of deboning poultry in general, and I love doing it for chicken too. But you can learn more about it in my online courses, so check out the link below, okay? So, it's actually an amazing way for cooking any poultry, as you can control the breasts and the legs separately. The first, I want to show you that with the first version a little bit, that's generally pretty good, is to French the bones, to clean the bones, to clean the ends. So basically what I do with the leg is just I cut through the tendons and then I sort of scrape it all away. And it's just going to look so much prettier. I always find when you leave that on quails, the same with the wings, it just doesn't look that neat. It just doesn't look that sort of a bit fancy. You know, you add a bit of class to your quail if you French the wings and if you French the leg bones. So the wings, I do the same thing. I literally, I show you that once again, I just go on the top where the skin is really tight and you can learn that in my chicken courses how to debone them and then just go on the back side and then just remove that, scrape it a little bit away and it's pretty easy to do that on a quail. Okay, here we go. And then I just go between legs and breast. Can you see that? And then you just cut in there, okay? And then you flip the quail over and then you press it down. And it's that simple. It is literally one of the easiest versions. Just really push it down. See? And that way you're able to cook the legs and the breasts separately. To cook it, what I'm gonna do, just a really hot pan, brown the breasts and the legs on one side, so you can see, and now I turn it over and brown the legs and the breast on the second side. Before I then basically arrange it the way I want it in the pan, so you can see I can brown the breast on the top as well, but just flipping it over like that, and that's why it's called a quail frog. Looks pretty spectacular, so I'm just gonna sort of stabilize it with some onion wedges to make sure it really straight so it looks really pretty later on when I put it onto the plate season it with salt season it with pepper and then it goes into the oven at like 250 degrees for six to seven minutes that's all it needs and here's your quail frog I mean I just love that with chicken too Second version, my favorite. Now my love with that version never quails. We're gonna French the bone and literally move all the bones except one on each piece of meat, like the wing bones and the drumstick bones. It's great for salads, pan frying, to top a risotto, and it was always used, you know, sort of in fine dining restaurants to serve quails together with, of course, tunnel boning, the tunnel boning version, which I will show you in a minute too. So that used to be my favorite way of cooking quails, preparing quails when I had my own restaurant, when I became the youngest chef in the world to get 18 out of 19 points at Gomeo. And all I do now is basically just remove the legs by pushing the legs and the breast away from each other and then just go through the thigh bone, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna French the wings 
the legs I do later on. It's easier that way. And just go in the back and then just sort of cut off all the skin, go between the muscle of the wings and the muscle of the breast and you're right there and then just cut through the bone and that's it. I'll show you that once again. So you go place your knife right in the top where the skin is sort of really stretching and then you just cut along there and then you go on the back right at the end of the muscles of the wing bone and you cut through there and then you just cut off the wing and it looks pretty fancy that way. To cut the breast off you just put the quail in the proper position and then you see in the middle you have that breastbone and you just place your knife on one side and then you go straight down so your guide is on one side of your plate there should be the knife and I just broke the wing wishbone now because I always say you know it's easier to get the wishbone out after you sort of broke it and then I just scrape along the carcass you see me doing that here again so now I'm going to break the wishbone and then I will just basically scrape along the carcass and the meat will just come off. When I come to the end of the muscle, there's nothing left. So it's, it's one of the easiest methods. You can do that, of course, for any poultry. So same thing on the other side. I just follow as a guide of that, you know, breastbone. And then I just cut along the bone. This should be on one side of your plate is meat. On the other side of your plate, is just the carcass. So here we go. I deboned that now and now obviously need to cut that piece of wishbone out that I left in there. So go right on the top of your breast as you see you're doing here. Pull the wishbone outwards and just cut it off. And that's it. That's done for the breast. The legs are really simple, really easy, even easier than a chicken. You just French the, basically the drumstick or just I've shown you before, scrape it a bit away and then just cut it off and here we go. And to do the thigh bone is really easy, you just get your thumb and you just push it forward until you come to the joint and then you cut it out. So there's no deep boning needed for the thigh, it's just a straight pushing forward of the muscle and as you push it forward, I will show you that once again here, so just go there, fingers, keep them tight, push it forward. Once you come to the joint, you just cut right through the knuckle and then you just fold the thigh left, back, and here we go. That is your deboning a quail where only four bones are left. To cook it, it's obviously easiest to pan fry. The first start off with the legs. They take a minute or two longer. So I always cook it on the skin side for basically most of the cooking time, just that I get a really nice crispy crunch onto the skin as well as cooking the skin through. Season it with salt and pepper. It's probably like three minutes on the skin side and then turn it over and another minute on the other side. And then you just let it rest in the pan. I added some garlic, I added some rosemary, thyme, whatever you want. And here is your pan fried quail, which basically have every bone removed and the bones you don't have removed, they're clearly visible. And look at that. Now that's a version that I would use for stir fries, casserole dishes, where the legs are fully exposed and fully boned and the breast stays protected with some bones. And I will sort of turn it into a casserole dish just to give you an idea what you could do with that. So you have a little inspiration recipe in the link below, okay? So that's a sort of fairly rare version of doing a quail. It's basically crowning the breast. So we're going to crown the breast and then we're going to just deep on the legs completely and then I will do what I did before. I just French all the end bones because as is, you sort of get the grip now and then between leg and breast you just cut down there. There's no need to cut any meat. You got straight to the joint. So just do what I do here. Just pull it a bit away. You're going to get straight to the joint and you just cut through the joint. And then with the breast, you basically just go underneath the breast and you just cut off all that carcass, which makes a pretty good stock. And here we go. There's a chicken crown and there's a chicken legs. So all I want to do now, of course, I need to take the wishbone out now in a different way. So I want to show you that as well. So 
So whatever you learn here today, you could use for chicken too, of course. So it's just gonna scrape out the end of the neck that was still in there. And then you see the wishbone sitting right on the top there. So you place your knife right behind the wishbone. You cut forward so that you disconnect the wishbone from the wing bone. And it's always a bit messy, unfortunately. And then just keep cutting in. Okay, see me here, and then you flip it over, and let's hope it doesn't break so you still can make a wish. And if it does break while you cut it, you need to quickly make the wish while you cut it. And push it back, and here we go. That is your quail crown. The legs, I do the same as before. I would just take the thigh bone out by just putting, pushing it forward, get to the joint, cut through the joint. Here we go. There is my chicken crown, sorry, it's quail, quail crown, I'm in chicken mode, and gonna show you how to cook that so straight away into a pan. So it's always nice because the breast is much, much more protected, so you're gonna get the most really choosy, choosy breast. So all I do now is just again, like before, I cook it mainly on the skin side, I add some mushrooms to it too now, then I take the quail out and then I just turn that whole thing into a bit of a sauce. So some mushrooms, some garlic, some onions gonna go in there. Separately what I do, I steam some vegetables and I add a bit of wine, add a touch of cream, as I said, the recipe is on the link below. I boil it up, I cook it until it's nice and thick. You can then add some salt, some pepper, some seeded mustard. It's really up to you. I mean, that's obviously a very French version. You could do many, many other versions with that. Lid on, cook it for two to three minutes. Vegetables go back in. I add now my steamed vegetables as well, and then I plate it all up. And what I did as well, I threw loads of truffles in there. I love truffles. Here we go. Give that a try too, before I show you the next version. Now this version seems to be the most popular one, but it's actually really bony because you leave all the bones in, almost all the bones. So people call it also spatch cooking, which doesn't really make any sense. Now this version is always used sort of for barbecues as well as often deep fried before it's being glazed with some marinades or some sauces. Now I will today wrap it in some prosciutto. So that is the version which puts off a lot of people from eating quails. But yeah, it's, it's bony. But first you take your knife, you cut on the side of your spine, sort of really rip it through. I've gone right through the spine. Then take the thicker part out of the spine and just cut it out too. Same thing with the chicken. Then you flip the whole thing over, okay? And then you need to push it down because you need to break the wishbone so that the breast is really nice and flat. And then you make some holes right underneath the breast on the skin as a pocket where you then stick the legs through. And as you of course see me doing here, I did all the French, the wing bones and the thigh bones as before. I'm not gonna show that again. And here we go. There is your butterfly quail. I then wrap that in some rosemary or sage and some prosciutto, tie it down with a bit of string because it just needs it. So you can see me doing that here again. It's just fold it over, tie it down, and then I'm just gonna pan fry it in a pan and finish it off in the oven. Total cooking time is probably eight to 12 minutes, depending on the size of your quail. And it works really well on a barbecue too. Okay, and now the highlight, the most complex way to deep on a quail. And I remember I used to work a uh, holiday at Raymond Plans, and he had a chef who could do that job in literally under one minute. I mean, he was very good at it. I think the head chef thought that he is a quality catch to his team. And the guy was also very pheasant, uh, pleasant, which was also on the menu, pheasant. I mean, okay, sorry, sorry, I'm gonna be carried away. Too many bad jokes. 
So what we're gonna do now is just basically French the leg bones. Don't worry about the wing bones. I can do that later on because I wanna show you a little trick with the wing bones. So then you just sit the quail up. So I have very small quails. So bigger quail is obviously much easier. So just go on the side, I disconnect the wing bones, okay? The wing bone gets disconnected from the rib cage. So go in there, can you see the hole I created? So that's what I did. I'll show you that much better here. So there's my wing bone, can you see that? And now I just go right at the end of it where the joint is and I push my knife just through so that you can hear that just disconnected. Great. Okay, so then I need to get rid of the wishbone because I did that. The wishbones are basically disconnected as well. And then I just go through that and just push them out. And in that case, like before, I just sort of pull the wishbone out, broke, quickly made a wish. Nick, okay, so now I need to sort of work around. That's the tricky part, the back there, because I don't want to get a hole into the skin. So I need to push my knife between the skin and the rib cage, and then I need to go forward, and then I need to sort of find the spine, and on that there will be the wish breastbone, breastplate, and I just cut along that. So that's where it gets a bit tricky, so I wish you usually would just use a pairing knife. So I'm disconnecting now the breasts from the rib cage. And what I'm gonna do now, I basically, as I keep going, I will fold the chicken, uh, the, again, fold the quail over and just keep going along here, as you can see me doing here. So now I'm getting onto the top of the breast plate or breast bone and I just keep moving forward, moving forward and try to disconnect the meat from the bone. And it's gonna take a bit of quality. You can see I'm gonna be rusty over the years. What I do here today is probably not the most impressive version, but I want to show you something like that you would most likely be doing. So I'm being a bit rough you know but that's okay because i don't want to just show you something that looks absolutely amazing and then you can never achieve it so even if you damage the breast a little bit that's not a problem because you're going to stuff it later on and it will all come together as you see in a minute it's absolutely perfect so don't worry if you damage the meat a little bit the only thing you do not want to damage is the skin so now i just kept cutting it all down i pull out the rib cage you see that here okay and that's how it looks like and now basically just gonna fold it back so here we go there is my chicken completely quail crap quail completely deboned and now we're gonna stuff it so I'm just gonna now open it up on the bottom or the top. It's really up to you. And then I'm just gonna put the filling in it. So the filling you put in there is really up to you. I just sort of have some diced meat, which added some mushrooms, some pine nuts, and minced meat. Perfect. Really, it's it's totally up to you. Just don't put anything in there that melts. Like uh, I know some people put cheese in it and stuff like that. That doesn't work. Break crumbs or you know just you know, typical chicken. You know turkey turkey mix turkey filling. That's absolutely perfect for that. So just push that all together. Put the quail back in shape. Get some string. Tie the legs together. Okay. Bam. Move at the back where you go around the wing bone. So it's basically making a cross on the back. Yeah. And then you go around the wing bones. So you basically stabilize them a little bit too. Can you see that here? And then you go forward. So there's obviously many, many different methods of that. That's my method. It's probably a bit unorthodox, but then, hey, it wouldn't be me if it would be just so straightforward, wouldn't it? And then I wrapped it around the wings, and then I just go at the back, and by doing what I do now, I really push it back into shape, I really pull it up, so basically tighten that around, and then you close, you know, the belly. Butter, quail goes in, cook it for a minute or two on one side, paste it with some butter, 
and then turn it over and that's probably the easiest quail to cook it's the most forgiving and it's obviously really nice to eat so i brown it a little bit on the skin side too i put it in the oven at 250 degrees but before that i add some aromatics to it like some shallots and some garlic and some rosemary and here is my whole roast quail or my tunnel bone quail and that's pretty impressive for dinner party and that's when one quail basically can become a main course because you put the stuffing in it Great, I hope that helps. I hope you liked the video. I'm sorry for the bad jokes. Check out my video on Cocova to get some chicken inspiration. And check out my online courses. And you have a great day. Thank you so much.